Hi, everybody. I am Fedora Project Leader Matthew Miller, and this is our roughly monthly video council call. The Fedora Council is the governing body for Fedora at the top level, and we try and um, do most of our business on email and IRC and um, kind of in, in tickets, not um, having to depend on meetings, but meetings are useful sometimes, and having a video meeting lets us do high bandwidth things and also kind of um, lets us make something that we can you know, share on the internets with the people who can't be here in the meeting. So that's, that's a useful thing. Um, what we tend to do with the video meetings is focus on some part of the project that uh, we're interested in making sure the council knows about, um, you need some attention or has something interesting going on to share. And uh, this time we are looking at the Fedora Ambassadors. Um, the Fedora Ambassadors is, uh, so Marie asked me to give me, to give a, a, a brief history. So I, I'm going to try and do this quickly. Um, I'm sure I, my, my summary of it will have some inac inaccuracies. So feel free to take me to task later of uh, internet about this. But the Ambassadors is one of Fedora's first um, subgroups, kind of a first part of the Fedora project, like dates way back to the beginning of time, pretty much. And the responsibility is you know, to be an ambassador between the project and kind of the rest of the world, the user community, the other rest of the Linux community, and kind of bring people into the project and also to show what Fedora is all about. In some ways, it also serves as like the on the ground sales organization. Obviously, we don't sell Fedora, but we want to convince people that Fedora operating systems are exciting to use. So the ambassador's jobs kind of take that message out there to people. Um, and from, you know, pretty active beginning, I think there were a time when there were like 600 active ambassadors at a time, um, actually, actually, you know, doing stuff all the time. Um, there was kind of a slump where the, the ambassador's you know, interest and activity declined. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, some of it is, um, kind of the traditional Linux users groups and those kind of things in just out in the world and the community stopped being so relevant just as, you know, people's attitude towards computing changed and the internet caught on and became the thing and so on. Um, and, um, I felt like the impact we were having by going to some of our traditional Linux conferences wasn't all that great. Um, I think also we kind of had a decline in interest in Fedora as people found other things newer and shinier. Um, I think we're doing a good job of making Fedora shiny again. So that's part of why we have re uh, renewed interest in the ambassadors. Um, and it's also the case that I, in my early leadership role in Fedora, made a mistake, which I call I was wrong about laser tag. Um, sometime I'm going to do a whole talk based on I was wrong about laser tag, but the basic thing is uh, the Fedora European ambassadors wanted to have a meetup to plan their activities for the year and then like do a laser tag um, activity as a group bonding thing. And I was pretty concerned about impact for our money. And that just sounded like that was too much fun and not enough Fedora. And so I put, you know, said, no, no, don't do that. Go, go, you know, go for a nerdy dinner and talk about Fedora instead of running around shooting each other with lasers. And in retrospect, that was really wrong because that fun bonding time brings people together and kind of the energy you get from that, um, I don't know, it, it's worthwhile. It pays for itself over the course of the year. And I, I see that now and I repent. Um, we're, we're, we're going to make sure that being a Fedora ambassador is fun from now on. Um, so th there's the background. Um, and I think, um, yeah, also, um, the group had a lot of good mentoring, um, but it also built up a lot of processes and a lot of uh, bureaucracy in, in, into becoming a, a Fedora ambassador. And that kind of meant that we weren't getting new people into, into the project as well. So um, anyways, fast forward to now, Marie and Shimantro and Mariana and some other people, Justin, others have all been working on uh, revamping this uh, ambassadors into something that can be useful to us now and can kind of connect with our Fedora mindshare activities and our marketing messages 
and deliver those to people and bring new people into the project and bring the Fedora operating system and free and open source software to more people around the world. Um, and so, um, yeah, so there's a revamp, um, which I know a little bit about, but I'm curious to hear more. Apparently there was just right before this, a very exciting kickoff meeting for the new project. So this is like fresh off the presses. Their um, paper is still hot and whatever. Um, so uh, with all of that, I'll turn this over uh, to Marie. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for that um, brief history. Um, I'll do a quick intro and then Sumatra and Mariana do one as well. Um, my name is Marie Norden. I'm Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I've been in this role since uh, November of 2019, pre-COVID times. Wow. <sighs> anyway, um, so I've been in this role since November 2019, but I've been involved in Fedora since 2013 um, with an outreachy internship. I started by doing design and then I just, I, I fell in love with the design team and I, I made friends and I continue to stay involved working on badges and then getting more involved in like community related stuff. And now I'm here. Awesome. Dumantro? Um, hey folks, uh, my name is Shumantro. So thanks, Matthew, Murray, for all the introduction. Um, I am Samantha. I work for the Federal Project. I have been in, I work for the Federal QA team, and I have been in that position for about, from 2016. I participated in the Federal Docs, and I'm a Federal Ambassador for last, I don't know, two years or so. So I have done a lot of activities in India. I have focused on, um, taking Fedora's presence to DEF CONF India and uh, big and small events, uh, release parties and that. So uh, I, I feel uh, very good to be a part of this in initiative and I'm willing to go ahead and work with all of you guys to make this a very, very good, newly shaped ambassador program. Cool, thanks, Sumatro. Mariana? Um. Hi everyone, I am Mariana. I am based in Europe, in Albania. I met Fedora for the very first time back in 2016. I created my fast account during a translation sprint. I became official ambassador one week before I sent Flock in 2017. Yeah, it was a very good first meeting with other ambassadors. I have been mainly organized uh, and participating um, in local and more international Fedora events. And I have probably met many of you in person in some of these events. So yeah, this is pretty much about me. Okay, uh, what, what's the format here? Are we doing questions? Oh, Do you Matthew, have a I, I can host it, don't worry. Okay. You're good, uh, just sit I, back and relax. All right, all we right. We got this. Yeah, right. we have an agenda that we wrote up. Okay, um, let's hear it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm excited. Okay, no, it's totally fine. We're excited too. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is like how the revamp came to be. And I won't go like on it too much, but I do want to give you guys a little bit of the perspective from mine. So, you know, Matthew has his long-term perspective. I have a little bit more of an interesting piece for you. So um, if you are unaware of how this works, I'll just quickly talk about it. So Red Hat hires me to work on Fedora's community and help you guys, right? So I am employed by Red Hat. So I have a team within Red Hat and there uh, I have a book club, right? So at the book club, we read a, a book called Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard, right? So we got through this book and it really talks about, you know, how to make those small subtle changes that make, can make a huge difference. Like just making the path easy for people to do a task. It makes all the difference, you know? So, um, 
we took that, uh, my book club took that and used the Fedora ambassadors as a case study on how we could do a change, right? So the mailing list or one of the tickets or something got kicked up again, right? And I had these, these case studies and I had all those stories in history and everything that I heard from my fellow contributors over the years about the ambassador program. And I took those two and a bunch of caffeine and I packed for two days and wrote this proposal because I said, it just, someone just needs to sit down and do this. And it can't just be a paragraph. It needs to be really a full picture of what this is gonna look like, right? So from my perspective, that is how the revamp proposal came to be. So from that point, we got feedback from the community and we actually did get some really valuable feedback from the community. For example, like we've involved the join SIG under this umbrella because they do community outreach. So we were trying to like, you know, incorporate them like, oh, we want you to be in these meetings, we want you to do these things. But the join SIG is actually a really low barrier to entry group of people who said, no, that's just not for us, right? So we incorporated that feedback and we changed it. We're trying, so part of my idea for the whole thing was that to keep all of the titles, right? We have ambassadors, we have advocates, we have the com ops team, and we have the join SIG. We have four groups that are doing community outreach and they all wanna keep their identities, right? So how do we structure these roles in a way that makes sense, that's not confusing, and in and, and a way that's clear and okay, makes sense for me to be in this because I have, uh, you know, I can hang out in this IRC channel, like a joint, you know, I, I, can, I have the capacity to help with join, or I wanna run events, I wanna be an ambassador, right? So we just wanna clarify like what all these different things are doing and make the, and, and just clear up the confusion around what it means to be an ambassador right now. Um, I think another important point of this, and I was just talking a whole bunch about this very passionately in the kickoff meeting, that this is a chance for us to modernize what being a Fedora ambassador looks like. So we, you know, we've, you know, Matthew was saying like, this is one of the first programs within Fedora old program, things used to work a lot differently than it, they do now. And like, I think Justin told me this story that like, there's other ambassador programs that model what they do after what Fedora has done. So this is another chance for us to be first, you know, as we, this is a foundation for us, be first in the way that we do our digital ambassadorship. And also, you know, like the new age of meetups and what those look like and also just accepting that we're in COVID times and that what we form right now might have to change a little bit as time moves on. Um, so that's how this came to be. And I am now going to hand it over to Sumantro. Um, and he's gonna talk about some of the desired outcomes that we're really looking for. So um, the the one of the things that we focused on, like Murray said, was setting the, setting the expectation right. So the very first thing that we wanted to focus was to learn from the outreach teams and the teams that are doing outreach. So one of the biggest things that we did was we took, we looked at Fedora Join and uh, we started learning how they onboarded on, uh, how they onboard contributors, how, how that helps them keep the thing going. And we wanted to bring that model up and we make sure that we we gather you know some representation from join and every other sig it's not like just join we wanted to bring people from com ops we wanted to bring people from translations we wanted to bring people from docs and we wanted to ask them how they are helping the outreach keep the outreach ship the onboarding for that particular team one thing that we wanted to really nail down over here was to make sure that the onboarding and the onboarding of new contributors and letting people be and express how they want to uh, contribute to the project and as an ambassador to be much better than before. That's one of the goals that we tried 
go ahead with. Now, one of the things that came even in the last meeting that we did a few minutes ago was in this entire process, we have started dividing the entire structure of how we want to achieve these goals into a Trello board, and which Mariana is going to talk about how we want to implement. But overall, the, the whole idea is we have broken that into multiple very small granular tasks, and we are asking help from Ferrara volunteers, which the kickoff meeting was all about. We wanted to ask questions and gather the volunteer mindset from people to help us accomplish some of those tasks the, in the areas that they are involved in. So if, if someone has volunteered from ComOps, they would help us achieve, um, you know, reshape the entire purpose of ComOps and how the structure of the teams inside ComOps is supposed to be. One, major task that we are starting off with um, if if you guys have noticed we have opened up two tickets one in the dni asking for a survey and one in the commons which would basically be you know trying to figure out who is considered to be an active ambassador and just do a run-up of or, or rather the cleanup of the entire ambassador group so that gives us some room to you know, gather the inputs from the DNI team and then help shape interviews and pass it on to the people who would then form something that we are calling as a rule book or a role book. And that would define the role of every single team in this entire process and how they are going to participate, how are they going to contribute. And everything that we are doing is Transparent that's put on a board. So um, can can anyone share the Trello board? Oh, Murray did. So that's good. So that's our source of truth, as it is said. And that is going to contain all the information, all the tasks. Who is going to work on it? When is the deadline? How everything is going to proceed? Actually, in that can, can someone screen share that um, so it's on the video because the chat links don't get stored. In I can the video. I can go ahead and do that, but I think. Mariana's going to talk about the Trello board. Okay. Yeah. Montrose yeah. talking about outcomes. Okay. So yeah. Sorry. Focus on that, Montro. You got this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, the outcome here is that you we would get a modern. I mean, what a modern 2020 digital ambassador looks like. So it's not just about packaging, QA, documentation design, magazine posts, and stuff like that. It's about how we shape the new ambassador program. That's the whole idea. And we're trying to strive to go towards that with the help of uh, a bunch of volunteers. And, and we, we are relying on volunteers to do that thing, the exact thing. So, with that, I would like to pass on the mic to Mariana or Marik, if you want to add something. Yeah, I want to add a couple things. So there's some more desired outcomes that I think is important to highlight right here. For example, contributor fulfillment. That's something that is 100% a goal for me. Like in this process, um, we want ambassadorship to be fun, something that people are enjoying doing, that there is some incentive in just being a part of this fun organization, right? So I think that contributor fulfillment is going to be a big part of that. And that's why I'm I'm trying, you know, focusing on with the TTF, the temporary task force, what they want to be doing as ambassadors, right? Which TTF is funny because I think of a TIF, but I know that it's a short for like so many things, but Anyway, we, we, we um, don't have enough acronyms in Fedora, so let's make some more. Listen, this one has the word temporary in it. So, <laughs> so we can hope that it actually won't stick around for that long. Okay, so uh, uh, like Sumantra said, modernizing what it uh, means to be ambassador, um, clarifying all the, the role, the structure, right? Just if we're going to say uh, TLDR. Uh, more successful outreach and onboarding and just a, a general, like, it, it just makes sense. There's a structure and it makes sense and we're all working together and not, like, 
overlapping in all these different ways, right? So those are what we're looking for, the desired outcomes. So now, uh, Mariana, if you want to talk about the Trello board, I will share my screen right now. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so first of all, uh, I would like to say why Samantha and myself are in this position. Uh, when this uh, um, idea was proposed from the Mindshare, I think that happened in July. So the Mindshare proposed the free names of people that could uh, be the, the colleagues for this initiative. And two of the names was myself and Sumantra. I think you can find that um, ticket. It is a closed issue on the Mindshare wrap up for everyone that might have, uh, that we might want to have a look. Uh, the very first step was to create a Trello board. First of all, um, Samantro, Marie, and myself have met uh, every week, starting from July. And we have been talking about how to uh, start. And we created a Trello board, which is the one that Marie is sharing right now. We have added here some tasks and ideas that we want to work on um, together with everyone within the Fedora community. And the idea is have everything visualized here so we can keep track of, uh, of the progress for each activity and the people that will, that are and will be involved in this, um, smaller tasks. Uh, the idea is to have every team within Fedora to be involved and help us with this. For example, for now, there are two tickets open, the DNI ticket where we have asked the DNI team to conduct a survey and the come up team to conduct uh, interviews with uh, the community members. Um, you can go around the Trello board yourself and check everything that we have put there so far. We would love to hear your thoughts and proposals and ideas uh, about it. I'm sure that the more people that are involved, involved with this, the more ideas we will have. So, yeah, this is pretty much my giving anything. No, nope, that is awesome. Um, and, and we also have things, you know, here for ourselves that, you know, just tasks that uh, the co-leads and myself will be working on, like organizing the call of the volunteers, uh, sending updates to Ben Cotton to get into his weekly updates, those kinds of things. Blog posts specifically from the co-leads giving updates to the community, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. I'm going to say if there's something missing on the Trello board, it's actually just missing because we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> so if it looks like there's something missing, it is. Uh, and, and we're going to get to that at some point. There's a lot, a lot to do and a lot to coordinate here. Um, so that's a general overview of uh, where things are at. We have really kind of somewhat semi-exciting news, which is we've proposed that this initiative become a Fedora objective. So at the council face-to-face, -face, we were talking about objectives and what's going to be next, what's next for Fedora. And I was like, do we do non-programming non objectives? And, and Matthew was like, yeah, totally. We've done uh, university outreach before. And I was like, there is so much work here that needs to get done. This is a perfect um, a chance to you know, do a non-programming thing for a Fedora objective. So we've started the process for that as well. So super excited about um, the visibility that that will create um, and uh, the recognition that it to all of the people who get are involved in that effort. You know, we're really trying to incorporate so many different people from Mindshare to be a part of this effort, whether it be, you know, some small task, um, like some updates to documentation or a logo or a badge or something like that, or, you know, Sumantro or Mariana who are super leading the effort. Um, so yeah, that is an overview, and I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then we can take questions. Um, first question, where can people who are interested in this go to learn more? Okay, so 
there's various links that I will will drop right here for you. But you said you can't see the chat in the recorded video. That's true. So we'll, uh, is Ben going to upload this later? Uh, Maybe he, he can include links with it. <laughs> um, right. so we'll we we'll make this. sure there's some links below the video. Right. So first here, there's the Trello board, right? And that's where you're going to find tasks. Okay. Um, those are going to be like the down to the nitty gritty, like write an email, send it, wait two weeks, follow up, you know, gather the, <laughs> the feedback in a document and you have each one of those things. Can you hear my audio? So Fine some people, can, some people yeah. can, some people can. Okay. So that is going to be um, where you're going to get the tiny, tiny breakdown of tasks, right? Okay. So overall, this is where you can find more information about the plan overall, right? So what is not in that plan are things like timelines and specific tasks. So that's a general overview. That's, you know, um, so there's that. Now, uh, say you were involved in the ComOps team already, and that's, you know, you're comfortable with that team, and you want to be involved with that, you can go here. And this is the ticket that the ComOps team is working on. And what they are working on right now is uh, research interviews with the different teams within Mindshare. So this is, is the team active? What are their current roles and responsibilities? Where do they, where's their IRC? Where's their documentation? Uh, you know, what kind of things do they want to be doing maybe that they're not currently doing? So basically research interviews with Mindshare, teams such as design, documentation, websites, et cetera, right? Um, <clears throat> the other one that's open, if you're interested in ENI and more like analytics and information gathering, they are working on a survey. So they're going to help us with a survey, and the idea is to get some really concrete feedback from the ambassadors uh, right now about what kind of stuff they want to be doing in the future and what they want, like, the role to look like um, and maybe some specific feedback on things to avoid. So yet yeah, another chance for people to um, mold what this uh, new thing is going to look like, right? So those are all of the link, relevant links for right now. You have the Trello board, the wiki, you have uh, the ComOps ticket, the DNI ticket. Oh, there's one more I will bring up here, forgot about. There is a ticket on the Mindshare repo, and we're just using that to communicate with um, volunteers for the time being until we kind of solidify who's going to be able to stick around and have the capacity. So if you do want to get updates right to your inbox, you can put your name here and comment and say, hey, I want to get involved. And then you'll get, you know, we'll, we'll always like, okay, the next meeting is going to be this time and it'll be on the ticket and you can, you can join in. So uh, we did have a little bit of a short lead on the kickoff meeting. So we're going to do another one next week for people who are interested or couldn't make it to this one, et cetera, et cetera. What's that link? Did I send the wrong thing? No, you sent it. I just, it just didn't showed up in the chat until just now for me. So, so weird. Sorry. No worries. I, I, I'm collecting all these links so we can put them. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate that. So yeah, that's where you can, um, you know, comment and actually get it to be a part of the TTF, right? So if you're in a Mindshare team already, some kind of task will come your way that has to do with the ambassador revamp. But if say you have extra cycles or is it something you really are interested in, or say you have an idea of you know, what you think, a cool idea of what you think a, a modern ambassador might do, just come and, and share that with us. Oh, there's one more link. What's up? I just remembered. Who has that HackMD file? Here, here it is. So we did take some link or some meeting and put 
We did take some notes during the meeting. Thank you, Sumatro. Um, so that's our notes from the first meeting. Bunch of people show up, plenty of interested people. So uh, really excited. Any, any other questions? More questions, Matthew? I'm busy copying links here. Uh, so many links. So many links. Um, all right. So you said that um, you didn't have a timeline on things. Um, can you can you give a rough timeline? If we have an objective that, that generally is a twelve to eighteen month kind of thing, like what will how will things look different at the end of this objective in in twelve months? How will things look different? And how will things you know six months, twelve months, eighteen months? What? Right, right. So I would like to I I, I don't want this to go longer than a year. That's my hope. Um, I think there's, you know, some lean, not, not leniency, but as far as the fact that we're contributing, you know, I'm not a contributor. I'm speaking as in the plural we. We're contributors, so there's a certain amount of like, we only have this much time, and sometimes deadlines or things that timelines we set for ourselves need to get pushed back. Nonetheless, I would like to see it happen personally in eight to 10 months. That's what I'm foreseeing. I would really like that to happen. Um, I think maybe a year is a little bit more reasonable. Um, it's a lot of work. There's a lot to be done and um, you know each little detail needs to be followed up on. So that's why I have Sumatra and Mariana <laughs> with, with me to, to help do this. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, like eight to 10 months and on the long end would be a year. Okay. Um, Mariana, uh, Sumatra, what do you need for this to succeed? Like, how can we help? Um, from my perspective, this is in the very early stages, so probably we will need a little bit more time in order to get in depth and and then we will ask for help. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't wait too long to ask for help. If there's something we can do, uh, let, let us know. So we have asked for help and um, we have the temporary task force. They have a very specific um, Thing that they're going to be working on and I can give you it's within the trail it's a link within the Trello board so it's one of the cards it's this card the finalize update and finalize com ops team structure so you know if you wanted to get involved as a volunteer uh, right here like if you want to help in a, that kind of way this is where to go and to look at these things and say I want to work on this and I'm gonna go ahead and start it um, what we need, I think, is a couple things. Patience. Patience. This ambassador program is one of the oldest programs in uh, you know, Fedora's history, right? And it's been in this kind of limbo state for some time now. I don't want to call out dates or anything, but it's been years? Yeah, OK. So it's been years. So let's just have a bit more patience as we are working through this. There are so many details. Um, another thing is there are going to be things that ha have been tried in the past that didn't work that we might try again. And that's sometimes hard for older contributors to just be OK with. And you know what? If it fails again, that's also okay like part of how we're going into this is the mindset that failure is a part of change there's an expectation that some things might not work and we need to adjust and redo so as a community uh, we can give each other the best of an uh, 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 assumption of good intent on the work that is being done um, by the volunteers here yeah, so that that I think is a big thing. Also support. 
recognizing, you know, the TTF and Sumatra and Mariana for like the great work that they're doing and, you know, supporting them throughout the whole process, um, checking in uh, with ourselves, like during the process, like, are we getting burnt out on this? Like, so that some of that kind of stuff we're going to have to do for ourselves, right? But um, it isn't just totally about the work we do need support from the community and there's going to be times when we come to your team and say we want to you know be able to rep you as ambassadors give us some information so when those moments come be ready to um, you know write up a short brief or send us the documentation uh, or send us in the right direction or to the right person so these are the kinds of things that uh, the overall community can help us with as we go through this. Yeah, that sounds great. Only questions from Matthew today? Nobody else? <laughs> Dustin's video stopped working, so... <laughs> What's that, Justin? I got to ask my question. I was just like, I'm a little biased because I was in the meeting. No, the hour oh, okay. ago, so I got to ask right. some of my questions there. <laughs> Do you want to ask them now as a repeat so that other people can hear them? The answers? Uh, I guess there's just the one thing that, just the one thing I thought was interesting that came up is just thinking about how we can be a little more decentralized, thinking about how we support people who are doing local events. And, and obviously some of that's a little hard now because of COVID. But once we do get back to that place where we're doing more local events, finding ways to where we've gotten really good on process over the last few years with the mindshare process for getting swag and for getting people funding and support, like the process is good, but there's other things that we could still do better for people who are in different places. Like the experience I have as an ambassador in, in, the, in, a, in the US in, in a, near a big city is a lot different from Mariana or Nasir who work in or who, who live in places that, you know, there's not a red hat cost center there necessarily, which just makes it harder for us to work in terms of logistics for things like how do we get packages there and customs and something that takes five days to get to me takes a month to get to someone else. So I just think there's lots of interesting potential um, going forward, not to focus too much in on swag, but I know that that's we all like our stickers, we all like our our pins, which the, the Nest swag was super cool, by the way. Um, but I just think there's cool, there's interesting opportunities for us to think about how we can be more decentralized, to think more local with the program. And that's what makes me really excited. Um, that kind of came up at the end of the chat in the last hour, but it's something that has been, I've always thought about for a long time. And I feel like we could do better and I'm excited because I feel like this is the chance to really try out some of these big ideas. So. Yeah, that, I'm really, that, that was just something not really a question, more like a comment. But no, it's a great out. comment. I think it's a great comment because um, it so it, it raises an interesting question too. Because you know, for me, the person who is in the community manager role, facilitating all that, having one process to do this kind of stuff is actually like really simple and makes my job easy. Like decentralizing it actually makes like my role as a FK like a lot more challenging and this is just a revelation I'm coming to in this moment with you all um, and uh, it's it's interesting and I'm going to kind of reflect on what I did for the nest swag too but I do think that um, it's going to be case by case basis and I, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to promote that idea. Like, here's the process, but it's if it if one aspect of it is not going to work for you, that's okay. That is okay, and we can work around that aspect. Like, say we can't ship things to you, but we can make a purchase at a local T-shirt shop. You know, I can call in the credit card or whatever it might be. And then you have your swag in a, a week or two or something like that. And that's, you know, you won't have the same variety that we have in our fulfillment center, but you'll still have swag. So I think that there's no process that's going to work for all of them. I think what, the best thing we can do is have a generalized process 
and customize it per situation. So that's uh, my Murray, we have... the open source ethos a lot. <laughs> Go ahead, Sumatro. Go ahead, Sumatro. So we have another question on the chat from Sayuk. It says, um, you know, how do we ensure that our awesome leaders don't get burned down with all the work involved in planning? Sure. So as of right now, me and Mariana and Sumatro um, meet weekly. And I am responsible for checking in on them. <laughs> I've made myself responsible for checking in on them and saying, how are you guys doing? Is this too much? Or, you know, let's talk about what people are saying on the mailing list. Are you guys feeling okay? Um, you know, or, you know, some person kind of opened a rude ticket here. And now, you know, we need to address this together and processing that after. And, um, you know, Dumantro was dealing with some computer problems. So we just, like, pause things for a little bit to let him take care of that. So, you know, I'm trying to do my best to uh, support them and, uh, you know, kind of mentor them in some of the program management and community management aspects. And then for me, it's kind of my own uh, responsibility, right? So I check in with Matthew and Ben, and they tell me, Marie, you're getting a little crazy. I check in with my manager, and he says, man, you need to take a day off. Or I, you know, give a presentation <laughs> to my department at work and everyone sends me messages like, you going to take a vacation or what? Right. So, <laughs> um, like, so I, I have uh, a lot that I do and I've worked into my life to help like process and deal with uh, this job. It's a big challenge, you know, so I appreciate the question. I'm I'm looking out. For Sumatra and Mariana, we'll be looking out for the team all together, and I have my fedora triad to kind of keep me uh, grounded. But that's a great question, and I think yeah. it's an important part of any any team, especially if we're scaling, right? Yeah, this is something that we at the Fedora Council meeting uh, talked about a lot back when we could go to Prague. Oh, that was so nice going to places. Um, we talked about you, um, bringing people into the Fedora Council and having a, a council buddy, kind of a mentor into being on the council. And so it sounds like for this proposed objective, Marie has, is already serving that role. So that that's awesome. Um, I We've never had co-leads for an objective before. I think this is a big enough thing that, that that can make sense. We'll have to figure out how exactly that works in practice. Um, so my thought was, so my thought was that um, since I'm already on the council all the time, I'm like the backup that's kind of always <laughs> be there. Dumantro and Mariana can make the meeting as possible, and like since we're not doing like face to faces right now, as far as like budgetary concerns about having to do you know travel for two people, et cetera, et cetera, I'm not really too concerned about that and yeah. even then it wouldn't even have like that huge of an impact necessarily it would depend but uh so for now i'm just like i think they should both be apart and between the three of us we'll always be able to provide an update and yeah you know and practically speaking um you know this you also share a vote if it comes to a voting situation i don't know if we'll have anything super contentious planned or coming up but um you know, uh, the combined seat gets one vote, so you have to agree uh, on your vote for things as well. I get my, right? I get my own vote too. I get, get one and a, I get one vote. and a third vote. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Like Just that. kidding. Mariana Swancho, you can share it half and yeah. I mean, it is since it is a consensus vote, anyways. It isn't like a, a score kind of thing. It, Ooh, um, two out of three. All right, cool. I'm got, into it's, it. it. It's an interest. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that comes up if it happens. Too. But I'm not super worried about that. No, uh, neither. I think I it'll work out fine. It. So I have a fair bit of idea. I was in council, so I have a fair bit of idea how <laughs> voting system works there. Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess I want to thank everybody for working on this because it's been something that's you know it's been one of those areas of 
sort of the fedora, I don't know, landscape that's been kind of neglected for a long time. And it's great to see all the energy around it um, because it is a really important part of the project. Dustin, don't say Fosco. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's my, my, my early, very failed attempt at this. Um. <laughs> you guys want to hear a funny story? So when I, um, I got into the F cake role, like I had me, Ben and Matthew got together and so that they could read off like a four page document or something about my to do's. <laughs> right. I don't know. I might be exaggerating. Fine print. Four, four <laughs> pages of fine print. Yes. And at the bottom in all caps, it said, don't go anywhere near ambassadors. Not your first thing. We didn't want to set you up to fail, but I think you've got you've got the you've got grounding in this now, and, yeah. and have been able to like build this up into a way that you are now. I think set up to succeed in it. So that's yes. awesome. Definitely, I, I'm really really excited to see where it goes, and I think we're going to see some new things, some exciting and fun things. And yeah, there's going to be like about. 300 tiny little tasks to do, but that is, you know, me and Marianne and Sumatra's job to track those and make sure they get done. So exciting times, guys. Exciting. And um, that's all I got. If there are any more questions, then I think we're we're good to go. Thank you so much, everybody, again, and I'm gonna stop the recording. See you Thanks. next month. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks all. This was this was great.